Good morning. Welcome to my garden. I'm going to take you on a short walk about my country garden. Planters are where I have my color. This garden consists of both shade and sun. I have the advantage of having all aspects because of the size of the property. A little bit of background. This garden was established 30 years ago. And when it was established, what you're seeing before you right now was a sea of Pittsburgh clay. Which uh, was a little difficult for the first couple of years and has required a lot of amending of the soil. We now have mature trees such as Katsura, lots of shrubs, Russian olive, tiger's eye sumac, and a mixture of mostly perennials. I do allow things, as you can see in the foreground, like milkweed to pop up and grow wherever it wants. Part of the idea behind these gardens was to establish a sort of environmentally friendly, wildlife friendly atmosphere that we could add to grow with as little maintenance as possible. No such thing as a zero maintenance garden, we all know. But the amount of maintenance in this garden um, is not too bad. I do let things fill in because I can. I have lots of room in this garden, that's for sure. Hostas are the big feature in the front garden where we have shade most of the day. A little bit of dappled sun. Every year I head out to the greenhouses and garden centers. This is the beautiful heuchera that I added this year. And every year, of course, there's always room for one or two more flowers. Oh, I hear a grosbeak beak above my head who's uh, sitting and waiting for me to leave so they can pop up to the feeder for breakfast. Front gardens, mostly sun, flocks everywhere, planters to add color, bird baths for the birds, clematis and roses make a wonderful mixture. I have Canadian roses uh, throughout the garden. This I believe is Henry, not Henry Hudson, John Cabot. And the Canadian roses do exceptionally well here. Unfortunately, standard roses will not, just will not survive the cold because we are in the country. It's a little cooler than the city gardens. And so I have to make do with not trying too many things that are into zone five. I focus on zone four plants and it's uh, a little more successful that way. Within the gardens, we have a few hidden gems. This is a Tyler a blue balsam from Whistling Gardens. It's a dwarf which will only grow to 10 feet so that's going to be a nice addition. It's about halfway there. As we move around to the west side of the gardens we are now into full sun gardens. These get sun all, all day long basically from sun up to sundown. which means lots of room for peonies, daylilies, phlox, yarrows, just about anything that loves the sun, I have no difficulty growing here. Rugosa roses, great for the pollinators, lots of blooms, lots of bees. This is a yellow clematis, which likes to uh, get together with the rose here and produce some beautiful little bell-shaped flowers come August. My side garden here off our deck is where I have the bulk of my nicely brightly colored planters. This year, some interesting combinations based on what was available at the greenhouse. The petunias wouldn't have been my first choice, but they are growing on me now. 
further afield here, more daylily beds. Unfortunately, we've had a windstorm in the last few days, which has brought my forsythia down. That is going to require a little bit of repair work to get it back up and out of my daylily bed. More hostas as we move around back. It's our tour guide, Miss Stella, with us here. The back of the house faces south, but due to the trees that have been uh, placed is half sun, half shade. So part of the garden is a full sun garden and part of the garden underneath the trees is shade. So a repeat of the hostas from the front. You can never have too many hostas. You can never have too many of any plant, really. So I'm just going to walk down through the cedar grove here and show you a bit of this lower garden. Uh, this lower garden uh, is um, below ground level. This was as a result of um, the construction of the house, not a planned garden, but in fact has become a wonderful feature. Anyone who's built a house will know that you have to adapt as your, as your building. Bits of sun, wherever I have bits of sun, I've popped in daylilies for enjoyment. The outer yard has large gardens of mainly shrubs now. Over the years, these gardens have changed. We've added feature trees. This is a crimson beech, uh, a regular beech. We've kept the trees well away from the house and the eave troughs. Lots of wildlife, turkeys, the occasional skunk, a porcupine who loves our garage doors, coyotes off in the distance, and once in a while we do get a beautiful deer step out and walk through the yard. Lower garden, as I said, sun and shade both allow you to grow quite an interesting combination of plants. One of the new plants, Sun King Aurelia, a nice addition to a shade garden, great texture along with the forest grasses. I can hear a few more birds over here chirping away. We do feed most of the summer, not as much as we do in the winter, but we do put some feed out and as a result have a nice variety of birds in our gardens. Lower sitting area, which is enjoyable late afternoon to get out of the sun. Screen porch essential due to mosquitoes. This particular uh, daylily is orange, but a double. And this is one of the first double daylilies that were developed. This came from a garden in Montreal, a friend whose mother was a very avid gardener, um, has provided a lot of nice daylilies. And I've also received a lot of nice hostas from her garden. This year's plant, the petunia bubblegum pink. It is charming. Has um, grown wonderfully, filled in, and one I will definitely use in future years. As we step up into the eastern garden, again full sun, lots more bee balm flocks. This is vanilla fraise, which is a lovely uh, hydrangea, a little bit earlier than the PGs, and this one turns a delightful pink. In terms of daylilies, another really lovely one that pops out. Daylilies are short-lived, but when they're here, they're very enjoyable. The rest of the eastern gardens are a mixture of perennials, shrubs. This garden is a riot of yellow every spring when the daffodils are out. 
followed by irises, peonies, pinks, reds, and whites, and then color from the phlox and the bee balm. You can see some wild aster in the center, which I'm trying to see if I can get a bit of fall color in the garden. I do have a vegetable garden. I have out of control tomatoes. Plus I'm planting in planters as a means of adding to my vegetables and herbs, trying out planters to see how they work. I hope you have enjoyed the walk through the garden. Have a wonderful day and do get out and enjoy your gardens.